This is the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014, coming at you live on twitch.tv slash Horrible Night. All one word. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined tonight by Jason Thompson. How's it going? I think it's going good. I haven't talked to you in... I mean, every time I say, I think I start every show with you on, I haven't talked to you in a while, but like we literally, we need to find ways to communicate other than Twitter in between, in between podcasts, but what, yeah, how, between, how the hell are you? In between comments on your dog's pictures. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's cute looking dog. Like we, we took our, a, we took pictures, a pretty damn good our, Easter photo. Or maybe your dog's pictures of you. Cause I think maybe that's more the case. Yeah. That one. Yeah. If he could, I could train him to do selfies. That would be trendy, right? That's a thing people do. He, he already knows how to look directly into the camera lens, and it freaks yeah. me out every yeah, time. He does just uh, peering I mean, into my soul. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Excellent, excellent. How's uh, how's things outside of games? What, what have you been up to? Uh, man, I've been so. Uh, let's see. Late June, like the last week of June, up until the July Fourth holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and I are going to. Virginia Beach, cool, and Williamsburg. So I've got to get in shape, not for the <laughs> colonial people, but for the beach people. Yeah, they're so judgmental. Those beach people, especially the douchebags like me, that just sit back with their sunglasses on and look yeah. at everyone. I don't do that. Yeah. Well, I needed. I think I needed some. I needed like a date. That's how yeah. I work. Like I needed yep. a firm date to just just work everything towards. And I actually found a, a workout regimen. Uh, at bodybuilding.com of all places. <laughs> to, like, tell me you got linked there. You didn't go there to find it. Um, I've been there before. Okay. I've been there before. I actually have like an account and it's actually a really good website. That sounds so, a, so generic. It shouldn't make sense. Like, no, it's, it's a really like over the last two years, they've really improved the website. <laughs> it's, it's uncanny. I, I, so. I, I would assume it would be a link bait website. So, <laughs> not quite um but i found like this 12 week workout that essentially what it does is it sets up like three phases so every four weeks you go through a different phase of the workout routine mm-hmm. and it also provides you with a basic diet that you can basically work off of every day and i'm actually looking at it right now it's crazy basically you eat seven times a day well not like not huge meals sometimes nine times and you also get to eat gummy bears after your workouts <laughs> Special Which is kind of special gummy bears, like yeah, like it keeps you no, not the sugarless kind because then you'll shit yourself. <laughs> that, that's good for weight loss. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's really healthy. Really good for weight yeah. loss. Yeah, take those while you do some power squats. Yeah, <laughs> clean yourself out. But I'm on day. I just started. I started last Thursday, so I'm almost almost a week into it. And I, I actually do feel better. I actually haven't had uh, caffeine for almost oh, nice. two weeks. I haven't uh, ate much of anything with sugar, really. I got through Easter pretty well, which was pretty surprising. My wife. I think that's sacrilegious if you don't eat. I know. The head out of my a wife and I. My wife and I went over to a couple friends, uh, their place, and there was quite the feast that I managed to find a way of working into my diet. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been going good. So we'll see. Um, I got through my first full week of workouts cause I work out, um, let's see Thursday, Friday, Sunday, and Monday to be really specific. So hmm. and like, I, uh, I always talk about working out. I always do. And it always seems like I'm that, such that's... a pretentious douchebag, but that's just, <laughs> it's just what I literally, maybe... that's what I do. I go from work and I work out and I come home and I play games. It's just what I do. Maybe I should move the off-topic stuff to the end of the show so we don't open with a Douchebag Central. And uh, yeah. uh, but but check it out. Like if you're if you're really serious about getting something that's like here's the exact workouts you need to do, and this is the stuff you need to be eating. If you're really serious about doing it for 12 weeks, just go to bodybuilding.com and search for I think it's uh, uh, shortcut to size is what it's called. Interesting. Because essentially you're just trying to build muscle and lose uh, lose extra weight. So It sounds like the polar opposite of, so when we did the, Justin Gifford and I did our little um, gaming our asses off for yeah. trying to lose weight and trying to get a certain uh, gamer score in that same amount of time, uh, which I think I've put on twice the weight that I lost. So <laughs> that could be a problem. Uh-huh. I need to revisit that. But I was doing calorie counting during that and like the my vice still continues to be sodas and sugar. So, yeah. um, 
but I do feel yep. great when I do cut those out of my diet. But um, I was talking with one of my buddies who's lost a ton of weight since college, and um, and his route, like I said, would be the polar opposite of what you're doing. He still, you know, kind of make sure you work out every day or every other day or whatever. But it's it involves fasting for 24 hours at a time. Like mm-hmm. you're basically on and off. And uh, he's a doctor, so that has to mean something. Yeah, but does he does he have like body mass, like muscle mass? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, really? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's 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 a lot of different ways of going about it. My metabolism is super high, so the fact that I'm eating seven <laughs> like small meals a day is not a bad thing. Yeah, I was just it was just kind of funny how I was considering the polar opposite. But I mean, that's the that's the thing right now. I hear like everybody's all about this works for me. And yeah. you've got plenty well, of options out there. So well, I will say, I will say, eat your carbs early in the day because you need them. And then as you go through the the night, mm-hmm. uh, just start just really focusing on proteins, and oh. that'll help because uh, essentially, right when you wake up in the morning, uh, overnight your body has been attacking your muscle because it has no more carbs to burn. So you immediately want to put a good like carb, like a cantaloupe or some sort of fruit, that your body will sort of start burning for metabolism, and go from there. I th- that is that, that literally has done wonders for me so far. And, and any any time I've gone on a diet, this is the nutrition segment from horribleight.com for you're the welcome. entire year. So but seriously, like if you're if <laughs> if you sit around and play video games all day, you yes. can do yourself a favor. You could yes. really do yourself a favor by changing your nutrition because it will it will certainly It'll help allow you, you to sit longer. Never, exactly. If you never work out, it will certainly keep you living slightly longer. Um, speaking of sitting still and not doing exercise, I finally watched American Hustle. Um, nice. I have, I'm not like the big go back through all the Oscar, um, movies, but this was the one that I, um, oh, what the, ended because of an error. Let's see if we can get him back. Yeah? What happened? <laughs> that was the weirdest. I was talking to myself. <laughs> we, I think Twitch shut us shut us down. They, uh, Twitch, they Twitch was like, "How dare he talk about working out and nutrition? <laughs> Lack of video game content. You've been banned." And then, like, we're gonna, they were going to give me a chance to switch the topic to video games, and I went to uh, movies. But um, no, I finally watched American Hustle, and. I don't know. That was like the one of the the only one Oscar movie that I hadn't seen that uh, that I really wanted to, and that movie pr- proved to be the weirdest movie I've seen in a while. Nothing at all what I expected. It just yeah, it's 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 not my my favorite of his lately. I, I preferred uh, Silver Linings Playbook last year over American Hustle. So, just, uh, but a good cast. I mean, that's the thing. Like David cast, Russell, good characters, up, good characters. Yeah. It's just when combined, yeah, it was not my favorite at the Oscars. The other thing that stuck out to me was that the director, David O. Russell, was tied to potentially doing the Uncharted movie and and essentially backed out after he was bombarded with nerd rage over all of his decisions and just like, dude, I don't need this. I can go make whatever movie I want. So, yeah, any, um, any, any actor wants to work with him right now. So, no, it was. he could he could basically film Christopher Bale watching paint dry and someone would appreciate it. I think I'd watch that. Like it's, it's I would probably watch it. This You'd was get my very f- angry at the paint. This is my first non Batman Christian Bale movie since Bat- Batman's. So it's good to kind of mm-hmm. just get to see him in something else and Yeah. He yeah, that that character that he played was uh it was uh very diff- different than Bruce Wayne. I give him that. So, <laughs> although imagine if that was really what Bruce Wayne was like. <laughs> I'm sure there's somewhere in the annals of DC Comics they went that route. Um, That's probably true. Um, just at least just just to have the 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 comb over of Bruce Wayne with that bad of a comb over. Oh, totally. Um, and then I need to go see the Captain America movie because uh, I have just have to go see it. It's amazing. Why is well, so? Without it spoiling so it, why is because, ev- everybody says okay. it's awesome? <laughs> okay, because it's not a it's not a Captain America movie. It's a Shield movie, and <laughs> oh. it's totally not what I expected. Did you totally and, not what I expected? So, are you still watching the show Shield? I'm still watching the show, and it's awful. <laughs> it's not great, although the movie makes the show better somehow. Gotcha. Okay. Damn it! Somehow it somehow it manages. Well to do played, that. well played. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it, out of 
I, did, I, I really wasn't a big fan of the first Captain America movie. I, I enjoyed parts of it. I like Chris Evans as Captain America. Mm-hmm. But this is way more a, a like, mini Avengers movie gotcha. rather than, like, the full-fledged, you know, cast and crew. So I, I, I was – and I actually saw it in 3D, and I hate 3D movies. <laughs> so I just – I got suckered into, like, the getting outvoted by everybody that went to go see it. How are but 3D movies in 2014? Like, I feel like all the kinks have to be worked out by now. My 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 eyes have a hard time with rapid action on the screen, mm-hmm. so it it takes a while. But uh, I still enjoyed it. I and I thought it was I thought it was it's probably my favorite Marvel production, not my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah, but probably my favorite Marvel production since they started. Cool. So I'll I'll give them that. It's. It certainly has me interested once again in the Marvel universe because I was kind of like, eh. Yeah, it's just been but. too easy for me to avoid going to the movies, and I want to get back into doing that because I, I really like going to the theater. So hopefully I will – and that seems to be the one I need to go see so far this year. So Yeah, um, and it, and you're, I'm surprised you haven't been spoiled other than maybe seeing the show. I think TV I've had it. Spoiled. I think I've had it spoiled, but I'm not trying not to connect the dots. One of those – Game of yeah. Thrones situations. Holy well, spoilers have been bad on the internet in the last month. It's yeah. people are terrible, terrible people. Yeah, it's. I mean, what it what it is? It's like it has a lot of action. It has a lot of like mystery, mm-hmm. intrigue, some detective work, uh, some you know patriotism. So Robert obviously. Redford. Yes, Robert Redford is actually pretty awesome in this movie. That's cool. That's he, It's I, exactly what he needed to do right now in his career. <laughs> like, he just can do, he like, I've done everything. I can do a Marvel movie. Yeah, exactly. Just, my, my grandkids will, like, think I'm the coolest guy ever. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I give him kudos. And it's and Samuel L. Jackson is really good, too. So, That's everyone cool. just shows up That's in, cool. in a big way. That's cool. I really like the, the Captain America movie was the surprise of the Gen 1 Um mm-hmm. uh, Marvel movies for me, so I, I don't really like that character in the comics. So, uh, but mm. they've pulled it off with the movies. So, sure. anyway, video games. What the hell have you been playing? What's your game of the week, buddy? Oh my gosh, Attack of the B Team, which is a mod for Minecraft. Yeah, walk me through that. It's like I saw that series pop up on your YouTube channel, and uh, yeah. I didn't know if it was just so. Without watching them, my first instinct was he's just like playing Minecraft in character. Like no. he's just like setting up a scenario in his mind that he is continuing no, to play through. No, but it's getting there. Okay. It is kind of getting there. <laughs> what is no, Attack of the B Team? Just, Attack of the B Team is just a uh, it's a modded version of Minecraft, so it allows all of these different mods that have been created for Minecraft to be implemented into one big sort of launcher. Mm-hmm. So you're able to. A lot of people have sort of taken all these mods and sort of built these different worlds and these universes that exist and they all play nice with each other because a lot of these mods by themselves are just kind of like okay i can do this one random cool thing in minecraft whereas these people sort of you know are able to work with developers and modders to combine all these different mods in order to have this sort of like super uber like avengers type of minecraft like you can just do totally uh, uh ton of different things it's 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 loosely uh sort of based on if you've ever seen any feed the beast videos Mm -mm. i don't know if you've seen any of those Mm. people would be familiar with that but it's just it's just another inclination of sort of modded minecraft Uh, and i feel i feel funny like my my fiance's niece is just like heavy into minecraft right now she's she's 11 and at this point knows much more about the game than i ever will Mm -hmm. um but just I kind of got exposed more to that mod side because they play the Hunger Games mod a ton. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, that was kind of then I started going back through your streams and trying to figure out what the hell are what the hell are you doing at this point in Minecraft? You're like everybody's not just out there building stuff, but that's my that's my just ignorant outsider assumption is what everybody's doing with Minecraft. But it's kind of cool to see not only the mod scene expand, but definitely mature. And now it sounds like they're working together to make some interesting stuff. Yeah, it's just you know, it, there the that is what's so good about Mojang or Mojang, however you want to pronounce it. Mm. They're just they just welcome that kind of stuff to their game. They just they they are very open to seeing what people come up with and what people can design and build, and it's crazy. It's it, you know, it basically in this version of the game and, and many others that have been modded, there are things called micro blocks. So you're not just constricted to like a 
one by one square, you can actually like reduce it to, you can basically reduce almost any block in the game to like a half slab and then reduce that down and then reduce it down again so that it's just like this thin cover. Uh huh. And it's just, oh my gosh, you can run pipes that send things around. and That's cool. It's, it's, it's crazy. If you're curious about it, check out a couple of my early videos to get a taste because like, I, I was very lucky I got invited uh, to a server with a lot of really cool people, some of them actually in chat right now. And it, like any moment that I'm not either working from home <laughs> or trying to play other video games, I'm, I'm in it to just... Oh, it sounds just like you're... Like, we've talked about games you're live streaming uh, quite a bit on our sh- podcast, but... Like this one actually sounds like you're genuinely excited to keep going back and playing it. Like it's. I'm just yeah. I'm just. Uh, I'm honestly just playing it to be playing it with a bunch of other people. I I record when I can. I sort of get to a point where I'm like I have to stop and start <laughs> and start doing something for a video because I just get lost in it. I've literally not recorded any other videos other than the video I posted today for a game called uh, Anti Squad, which I tried to talk about last time. Gotcha. And I did not do a very good job talking about it. Um, well, well, tell us more about Anti Squad then. Anti Squad, okay. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's it was a mobile game, but they've ported it over to the PC. But essentially, what it is, it is an an action adventure strategy game with turn based tactics in it. So you play these various characters, sort of from like a DEA group, and mm-hmm. you're going into these cartels, and you have to sort of infiltrate them and like you know kill everybody, or you have certain objectives. I really haven't gotten so far into it, but I played through the tutorial. That's kind of what my video was. I was like, I've never played this. I'm going to play the tutorial, and I played the first level after that. And yeah, it's just it's it's just a really fun, energetic turn-based game uh, with a lot of variety. The music's really good in it. The graphics mm-hmm. are really nice. It's I think it's like four bucks on Steam right now. Nice. So it's super super cheap. It's early access. I think what they've done is I think they've taken sort of the mobile version of the game and they've expanded it. Cool. And we, I think uh, that's what they're. I think that's what they're doing right now. Coop and I played a kind of a game in a similar vein that's been out on Android for a while uh, called Meltdown. That is another like yeah. three yeah. or four dollar early access game. Uh, but you you said this is like fast action. It's or you know it's it's turn based so i mean it, it's as fast as you want it to be gotcha. but yeah so it's like you just you have the bad guys and you're the good guys and you're sort of this eclectic group of you know different abilities and, and you know genders and stuff like that and everyone sort of has their own fun little role that they play and you just run around and you know you have that you can you know this well, says like get to this get to this point where well, you could you could run straight that to that point as long as you get it shot at or you could go through and kill everybody and then sort of be king of the mountain it's it seems like it has a lot of variety for what it is a little oh, bit cool. of replayability they they kind of encourage you to go back through and sort of play it differently so and you can kind of you you it's not one of those i don't think it has like fog of war mm-hmm. so you kind of know where everybody is on the map which is a little cheaty in my opinion but it's fun at the same time like how many players you, at once you, um, well, it's just, I think it's single player. Okay. Okay. But, and so, okay. Gotcha. um, but you know, there's diff. there's obviously different, uh, got bad guys and stuff running around. Gotcha. So yeah, I just, you know, right now I'm kind of like, I'm, I'll play a little bit more of it and see if it's maybe worth a, a video series. If not, maybe I'll stream a little bit of it. <laughs> yeah. What's your, because... what's your testing prog- process like with, uh, uh, with games you don't really know that you're considering to start a, a streaming series on? Well, if I buy the game, that's that's like step one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when I get to the point when I buy the actual game, I know probably a little bit more than I should. Although with this, I'm game, working it was to the... change that. I'm working yeah. to make you buy games as ignorantly as possible. Well, based off was, of my was, lies. Yeah, this was a cheap four dollar purchase. You know, I didn't feel bad about it. I was mm-hmm. like four bucks. I think I actually got it through, um, uh, what was it, Green Man Gaming? Okay. I think they were running a. They, it might have even been cheaper than that when I bought it. I think it might have been like two dollars or something, but you know that's the difference for me—four dollars or two dollars. Now that I've stopped <laughs> drinking soda, I can afford stuff now. <laughs> um, but what basically what it is is you know so like today I went through and I was like I've never played this. I'm gonna you know this is my first impression, and then at the end of it I'm like okay, do you guys want to see more? Or I like right now with that game I'm like I'll probably do a few more videos, but really when it comes down to it, if I'm not enjoying the game, it feels like work. And mm-hmm. then that's pretty much when I stop playing those games. Yeah, because I actually have a few uh, games that get 
way more views than my Minecraft videos, but at some point I'm just like, yeah. they're just work. Like I'm just. No, that's what I meant. Like hearing you talk about Attack of the B Team and now this. I mean, you you mentioned Anti Squad. The thing you kept saying was that it's fun, and then you're genuinely excited to talk about the B Team stuff. Versus, I know you when you've been fatigued by some of the things that you're you're kind of yeah. working through. And uh, I, you know, I I just know that you know at the root of this, you got to have fun while you're playing. So uh, that's that's you good. do. Yeah, that's good here. You just you. And at the same time, this is only going to make me return to those games possibly stronger because mm. I know that there's some random game that I can go and just throw yeah. 20, 30 minutes at and then get back to, you know, quote unquote work. I mean, you're playing video games. You really can't complain too much. I mean, I honestly but, think the out of the last like three or four years, if it wasn't for those little random indie games showing up, those three to four dollar, thirty five dollar uh just random games I don't know anything about that I try and they're just fun to play or just a fun diversion. Like without those games, I think I would have fatigued on a lot of my uh the the larger games that I stick with. And yeah. uh, um so no no. It was just cool to hear you excited about games again. So um I've I can't really pick a game of the week, but my I have a platform of the week because yeah. I I discovered in some of my conversations about Vita and 3DS releases with friends um, that uh, I don't really touch those systems anymore because ever since I got my iPad mini I've there's just been there's been something happening with mobile games like the, these games are maturing they're getting better they're worth talking about they're worth playing there's just a lot more quality games out there and I've got I'm now balancing four games on my iPad and I've talked quite a bit about Hearthstone um, so I yeah. won't talk anything more other than if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I I also really enjoy streaming Hearthstone. That that continues to be fun. But that's mm. I'm always sneaking in a couple games of Hearthstone. I have yet to watch you play it. I I have actually seen no footage of that game, and I, you you I play it randomly. It. So um, yeah, I, I just I don't know. I you know Magic the Gathering. I saw it in yeah. junior high, and I saw the remnants of those people in high school and. I'm, I never oh, judged. No. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. you. Know, I never judged him because I was like, there's got to be something there that I'm missing. But it was so over my head. That so what, I don't know. what I'll say to that is Hearthstone's tutorial is very welcoming. It is very easy to get into. And um, th- that's step one. I mean, well, well, step zero is it's free to play. And sure. I still I still don't know why you would spend money on this game. Uh, I don't know how Blizzard's going to make money, but I know people will buy cards even though you don't need to. Um, so the tutorial is really welcoming. That got me through the door. And then I've, I think I've said this before, but the moment I had, I had like two matches, one where I was like way ahead and got destroyed in one round. Like the dude made an amazing comeback, just had an amazing combination of cards. Um, and then I kind of did the same thing and just like swinging, swinging the momentum and just realizing that that's possible in the game makes it a lot more fun to play. And they've just done something where I, I'm not someone to just play a random competitive games against strangers. And they've just something in the way that you only have six emotes to be able to communicate with that other player and you can mute the other person. It's just, there's no, there's no hindrance to just jumping into a game. Like I, I, something has changed in that I just have fun playing with, whomever so um so you can just like mute all the 12 year olds yeah I'm, well they can't be 12 year olds because they all they can say is the worst thing they can do is taunt you which is yeah. the same like repetitive warcraft phrase whatever the character is so it's you don't ever hear them so uh, uh, i gotcha but gotcha. um and then the other kind of bigger game uh ftl just came out on ipad yeah. and um yeah so i i've never really dove heavy into that game so this is, but I've started playing it both on my PC and on the iPad because I wanted to see how the touch controls worked and they work phenomenally well. And so yeah. both of those, both of those games, I'm just like I'm playing it on my iPad and if I'm at my computer, I'll load up a game too. So um, I'll be streaming FTL soon. I, I completely suck at that game, but I'm I'm totally I'm totally in now. I got to get through. That is that is half the entertainment value is watching someone that has no idea yeah. what they're doing playing that game. Oh man! And get as far as they can, and then celebrating those small victories. I mean, I just I want to know what terrible decisions I'm making because, oh man, I I I have a certain way that I'm going to play that game, and I'm sure it's completely wrong as far as what I'm spending my salvage on and that kind of thing. But I'm totally hooked did on you, that. Did you play it before the expansion at all? Not. I mean, just we played. We did a couple game curious videos, and I played like one or two rounds, but not okay in any. 
you know, Josh and Ethan dove heavy into it, so I didn't really sure. consider it. But but you know you know what the game's like before the expansion, then you know for the most part. Yeah, I, I, but I, but I haven't Enough turned to be the, dangerous. Yeah, but I haven't turned the expansion stuff on yet yet either. So. Oh well, then there you go. Perfect. Then yeah. then you actually are getting the yeah. full FTL experience. Yeah. So yeah, the the, the advanced editions out for both platforms and. Um, there's an option just when you start a game, whether to enable or disable advanced okay. advanced content. So, and they say uh, if you haven't played, to disable it. So, I'll I'll add so, that in eventually. So, did basically that get uh, released on the iPad? Mm-hmm. Like a couple weeks, with couple the, weeks ago. Yes, yes. Along with the so it was like it was already out on PC, but then they put it on iPad with the expansion. Yes, yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, and so then they just patched in the expansion to the existing PC game. So. Perfect. But yeah, it, it it plays great on the iPad too, so that was kind of a bonus. Um, and then t- the two surprises uh, uh, for the iPad, Monument Valley, which is, um, if I say an M.C. Escher painting, do you kind of know what I mean? Like yes. as far as Yeah. So it's a, it's a puzzle game working with that style of perspective where you're just moving platforms around and they kind of intertwine on another and you have got to, you've got to basically um, find a path to the end by manipulating the environment. Mm. Um, and, uh, but it's just, it's a, it's just one of those, it's kind of like an art game. It's very beautiful. It's the atmosphere is like, it's the most absorbed I've been in an iPad game since sword and sorcery. So, um, like as far as just, the soundtrack and just it, it's it's fantastic. It's 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 really short, um, and they're uh, but they're going to be making more levels for it too. But uh, that was a very pleasant experience. And then the last thing, I don't know where the hell Hitman Go, Go came from. I really hope that it came from like the core Hitman team with them just trying to experiment with their formula. But like, yeah, the best way to put it is they were. It's like they were making a Hitman board game and then just put the board game out on. The iPad. It is very, it is very strange looking, but very, very oh, I cool. I see it now. Yeah, it's got a it's, very unique art style, and it's just, yeah. it's like um, I don't even know how to describe the board, but basically, all the characters have these set paths that they walk on, and you get you get to move one slot space at a time, and then the rest of the board moves, and you've got to basically try to sneak up on all these people and kill them, and but it's just it's got such a weird sense of style. I don't know how hitman got attached to this but it's i love it i love it but yeah they look like like board game pieces yeah yeah it's like um I, but it's but they each have their own track i'm trying to think of it's not not like foosball but like what what else works that way uh, i don't i don't really know but it, yeah it just looks like they have their own set paths or uh, ways that they can get around and i remember seeing advertisement or yeah ads for it and i thought like are they making a hitman board game and then it's all yeah. that was for the iPad. It's like the whole, yeah, the whole art style. It blows my, the game blows my mind, like how it exists, how it happened. I want to know. And like I said, I hope the core Hitman team was involved because, you know, who knows what the hell they're actually going to do with Hitman from here on out. So right. they know they can't just make another Hitman game uh, just, just straight gets up. more and more obscure as it goes on. Yeah. And so, yeah, I hope they keep heading down this weird path like, and we get. Like hit, Hitman haiku. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, you know, I've iPad's kind of coming into its own for me. I've just noticed that is my go-to on the couch when I have a break. Um, the platform of choice. I mean, my Vita's still sitting it, here looking sexy, but... And do you think, you know, a device like that helps you sort of appreciate when you're playing the PC games more? Does that make sense? Um, kind of in, in the same regard that I need to, like, flesh flesh out my gaming diet like like i was saying i need these smaller games to just give me nice distractions before i dive into heavier experiences and you yeah when i'm doing mobile stuff like that it's it's for 10 15 minutes at a time and i just need a a distraction and a filler and but i still love playing games and it's a it's like these games i'm really i'm feeling really good that you're starting to see more games that are in that like five dollar price range on on these platforms and I think we're getting better quality experiences, more traditional experiences. So it's definitely maturing, and it's not just all free to play stuff, uh, which cool. has been nice. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's been been surprising that that's kind of overtaking taken my my gaming diet lately. But um, moving on, uh, I so we're gonna try out 
some more game pitches, some game ideas. Um, integrate that into the top video game podcast. Um, we're going to get to this game generator a little bit later. I'll post, I'll go ahead and post this in chat so they can have fun. Um, let's see. But the first thing I kind of want to talk about, like some ideas, I, I've been playing Mega Man X and, um, okay. Are you how familiar are you with Mega Man games? Like as far as have you beaten one? Have you played one heavily? Okay. I never I never played them, but I always watched others. Okay. Like I just it, it was never quite my cup of tea. It was probably one of those games. Luckily, you know, TVs back in the day were like, you know, nice thick glass that if I threw the controller through them it wouldn't, you know, mess with anything. Mm -hmm. But if I tried it now, obviously I'd like punch through my computer monitor. So um, I'm familiar. I know how frustrating they can be, but I also know how wildly entertaining they can be. So, Mega Man X is awesome. I finally came around on it. I it was the I skipped the game because like I, Mega Man Two was my was my jam. That was uh, but the thing with Mega Man games is they're they're a completely different game after you know the ends and outs, the tricks to the bosses. Basically, like you find the weapon that it that that boss is weak to, and once you've done that and you've kind of memorized each level that each for each robot boss you've kind of solved the puzzle of Mega Man and then you play it just to play it just to win and to get better because I mean honestly it took me without any background knowledge it took me five or six hours to just get through the main bosses the the, the first set of robot bosses in Mega Man X and now like I feel like if I would were to replay it I could get through that much quicker to get to the end and I guess I want a game that recreates that experience every time because now that's gone. Yeah. Like I can, I, you know, there are 20 other Mega Man games I can play to like figure out that, that, um, the combination of the bosses with the weapons. But I want that. I want a Mega Man roguelike. I think is what I'm really getting at is something that has that sense of discovery and that discovery never ends. Like now I'm playing Mega Man X completely differently now that I know it versus, Right. Really, I have the most fun with Mega Man games and figuring them out. Even though there are a lot, it's a lot of just beating your head against the wall. And um, yeah, I think I want a, a Mega Man roguelike that you know essentially has this library, giant library. Especially pull them from all the twenty Mega Man games, like of all the powers combined with these different settings, and you know, and kind of cut and paste the levels together and the cut and paste the enemies that are in, in the levels together and just mix it up every time that, um, make me figure out, um, what combinations are going to work to get through this and then make it different the next time. Cause, um, I don't know if that would be the ultimate Mega Man challenge. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know not much, not much to add on, on there, but let's, uh, Let's dive into this game generator. So I post, I'll post this in the in the notes, and I posted it in chat. Um, but essentially, the guy behind Cookie Clicker, I don't know if you ever got pulled into that browser game. I, I didn't, but I, I'm fully aware of how addicting it can be. <laughs> he, he developed this game idea generator. There's a lot of them out there, but this one has just it's all, it, it generates very high quality descriptions of games. You've written down a couple, but let's go with your favorite one and and see what we can come up with. Oh, well, you, why don't you actually? Why don't you read the others and then stop at your favorite one? Okay. Does that make sense? Well, one I one I will point out. It says an indie game where you discover the beauty of the universe with a shovel. That game's <laughs> called Minecraft. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, there's another one that says an action game where you smuggle terrorists to get your revenge. Oh, awesome. Wow. <laughs> like, I just you're a bad dude. We call this we call this game Al Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to see if I can get my, my camera cut off again, this time by the, the government. Um, oh, a simulation game where you invent food chains to make everybody happy. Oh. Like, like who, comes with, who comes up with that? So so you, want gold, you want goldfish at the top. Yeah. And I have to pick between these last two, don't I? Okay, so it's definitely uh, got where you... Uh, okay. A friend. I'll go with. Oh, I'll, I'll go with the second the one. Is, 
The runner-up is an adventure game where you hide from priests to gain levels. <laughs> that one is just funny. <laughs> that one's just sadly very funny. The, pr- the, pr- the saddest part is you never win that game. That's true. You always get caught. That's true. Or if you don't get caught, then you're just always running away. <laughs> But the one I think is kind of, it's funny, but also we might be able to dig on is a first-person shooter where you commit war crimes with innocent people to solve mysteries. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. There's so many layers to that that's not even... Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, so you're, these are all patsies. These are people you're just, you're tricking into going along with your plot. My question is... What types of war crimes solve what types of mysteries? I, I don't know. That's what's so like it, it. That's what makes it deep. That what's that's what somehow makes this then, game worth playing. And then I've got a question. Question the uh, the choice of making that a first person shooter because solving puzzles in first person shooters is definitely not that strength. I think that's the weakest part of this puzzle. Um, is the uh, the FPS side? <laughs> okay, so what kind of war crimes would solve mysteries um you could come up with this elaborate plot to basically all right still this is i struggle with the first person shooter side of this but you basically bring together all these landowners these 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 goody goody landowners um to trust you with some cargo that you're going to bring in which turns out to be weapons of mass destruction but they don't okay. know this. They don't know this. Um, and when the weapons are of mass destruction um, are discovered by whatever the superpower is in this game, it basically diverts all of their ten- attention to where these weapons of mass destruction are so that you can... That pulls them away from something else that they were protecting that has some sort of historical mystery that, like... You know, essentially, they're sitting on something that that may, you know, be the site for the Holy Grail or the the Ark of the Covenant or something like that. Like, you got to get their military out of the way because they're on top of this worldwide secret that you're really Indiana Jones in this scenario, but you happen to have access to weapons of mass destruction to distract the government to do this. So, so you're Indiana Jones, Jack Bauer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But like, and then the trick, are there any rolling boulders? Absolutely. Involved? <laughs> I okay. mean, it's two types. Of, yeah, it's two types of games. Like, I, I picture like this kind of strategy level where you're moving all the pieces, like a risk level of moving all the pieces around to basically you see where all these military installations are, and you got to pull them away from from them, and then you pick which which mystery in that area of the world you want to go investigate. Okay. I see what you're doing. <laughs> it's really it's really hard to talk about war crimes without sounding like an asshole. Like, That's what, yeah. Like sounding like you want that stuff to happen. Like clearly you don't because you're it was you're it was game. tough to develop a war crime that actually isn't hurting people. Like it turns right. out that those aren't really weapons of mass destruction and yeah. They're kittens. Yeah. Yes, they're kittens of mass destruction. Kittens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's just that one is that one is so layered that the fact that a random game generator came up with it and that oh, we that's why that thing is so good. It's so good. To it. it is so good. Yeah. So yeah, check that check that out. It's a lot of fun. We'll we'll I think we'll incorporate that into our game pitch segment uh, quite a bit going forward. But uh, uh, last thing, oh, let's let's talk a little. Uh, let's see what's going on in the game industry. Um, the big thing that had my attention today is they released a gameplay trailer for Dragon Age Inquisition. And yep. that game, that's a pretty good-looking video game. That um, It is. Um, I still don't know how the game the gameplay is actually going to be. Like, they, you know, they get in there and show some action. I can't tell if it's going to still feel like Dragon, like the original Dragon Age, how much influence Skyrim is actually going to have on this series because they've talked about that in the past. But graphically... Uh, they are they're bringing the big guns and last i checked it's coming out for basically everything it's last gen and current gen yeah. so um but you know i'm assuming we were looking at it on the pc in that trailer cuz i'm a snob and well 
Yes, because I read an article today that basically they had to address the fact that people were like, is the Xbox 360 version going to look the same as the Xbox One right. version? No, it's no. not. <laughs> I don't know I don't know if you knew this. There's a reason that you're paying $500 for a console so games look better. Gosh, I mean, people, what a, people what that a, ask questions like that, I just want to smack in the but face. But what a lose-lose situation for the developers of that game. Like, exactly. as far as, like, you know, when... when Titanfall kept getting delayed on the 360. It's just like that studio. Like, if they make it too good, then they question why they upgraded. But if you yeah. make it like shit, it's just like, why are you wasting my time? And yeah, I think they all need to move on. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I Dragon Age is an in, in, in interesting place with uh, Bioware, Bioware and EA right now. But I think I think it could make quite a splash. Witcher Three got out of its way. Um, yeah. You know. There's really nothing going on in the Elder Scrolls uh, universe this year, so it's it's got as far as like your medieval RPG. Um, it, it's it's release date in October. It's, it seems to be things are setting up very nicely for Dragon Age Inquisition. I think we've all forgotten about Dragon Age Two, and uh, yeah, um, I didn't. I I saw like a little bit of that, and I was like, I'm good. So I hope I hope they have figured out the issues and they make a. I hope it plays as good as it looks, basically. Well, and that yeah, the thing about the trailer, like you said, it you know th- there there are obviously some some cutscenes in there, but it's really hard to tell what's the game and what's not the game. Like that's what I enjoyed about the trailer was that a lot of the a lot of the, the gameplay footage was blended really well mm-hmm. with with the cutscenes. So I'll give them that. But but my favorite line from the trailer is the woman the addressing the what I assume is the main character. It says, you have no idea how you survived. And then he just looks at his hands and there's fire coming out of his hands. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm on board now. It's like, I'm pretty sure the fire in my hands had something to do with the fact that I'm the only one still here. Yeah. I mean, that was the, they had that whole generic am- hero with amnesia thing starting, but they, they played it off in a cool, cool fashion. With, right. Right. Uh, apparently glowing hands works as a good hype material for us but but i was ex- i was just genuinely excited when i i saw that cuz i i want them to figure that series out because dragon age origins started off really strong it seemed like a really mm-hmm. good foundation and i'm hoping they kind of get backed with that i think the inquisition name isn't all that inspiring but um it seem, yeah it seems almost like uh seems it makes it to be it makes it seem smaller scale for some reason to me like it feels like is this a is this the new dragon age or is this kind of just a, a side side story to dragon age i don't know yeah they they you know from what i've read they they're just basically saying that we have a like a full story arc throughout the, however many games we do but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I just it's hard to tell, but it almost makes it seem like uh, like an Assassin's Creed game or something. That's what I would expect one of those games to be called. But yep. I don't know. But yeah, we'll see yeah exactly. It does sound like an Assassin's Creed game. Um, next up, I think we I think on one of our previous shows we talked about Double Fine was helping uh, publish other indie games, and mm-hmm. now I was just I'm hoping this is a trend because it looks like. Uh, the developers behind Starbound, Chucklefish, they're going to actually help. They've started helping this game, Heartforth Alicia. Um, they're going to publish it to platforms beyond the PC, which is indie devs helping indie devs. That's awesome to me. That is that is like how how that development environment can stay healthy is if, as long as they continue to work together. Like they don't have to, you know, get bought. But like some of these more successful indies could really help out the uh, the up-and-comers, and this was just, I don't know, this is a really cool story. Yeah, it's a really cool story, but of course I have to play devil's advocate <laughs> and sort of point out the fact that everyone that wants them to focus only on Starbound is going to yeah. somehow use this as an excuse to be like, but you're helping out these other games and you're moving <laughs> your whole place to London, and why do you have to do that? The internet is... 2014 and bleh, why don't that's... why don't you want to be Mojang? Why don't you? Why can't everyone be the Minecraft developers? You should always, to the end of time, support your one game. We'll pretend like yeah. you didn't move on from Terraria, but always, <laughs> always support this game. Like I, Mojang's really set the bo- the bar really high for that stuff, and we can't expect that out of um, even games but that are kind of derived from that. 
But think about it, though. The guy that created Minecraft no longer develops Minecraft. There's right. a reason for that. He has you know, hired they, a team. Not a, yeah. not a lot of people realize that the guy that originally was on board with that decided, no, I think I'm going to let somebody else work on this for a while I because gonna... I have other things I want to do. Yeah. But, and, it, but, you know. and it doesn't sound like, you know, I don't know what their their money situation is nothing near what Minecraft is, but the, they're sure. not interested in, you know, building a game and then making a support team for that game. I think that's totally fine. I think these games, you know, it's kind of silly to be saying this about Starbound, which isn't officially out yet. Exactly. But um, but no, I, like I said, Indies helping Indies, I think, is a, a, a great trend and... Uh, it's it's good to see some of these companies reach out to others and you know hopefully impart some of their knowledge and makes for better games for all of us. So well, then they get to push their entire fan base into a, another game that might compel them as much as the game they're developing. You yeah. know, so uh, yeah, I'm 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 100 on board with this. And the game looks cool. Um, the title is questionable as far as pulling me in, but um, if you get past the surface level, uh, Metroidvania role playing game. Um, there's a few of those coming out on Kickstarter, so it'll definitely need the help to separate itself. But artistically, it looks looks great, and um, yeah, like I said, hopefully, hopefully this is the beginning of a trend with uh, several several indies helping out other indies. Um, so I sent you a link to um, our our Tumblr post about the Nintendo Girls Club. Did you watch that trailer, or did you just watch the GIF? I've seen it before. I've seen it. I saw a while ago. Has okay, it been so around for a while? I th- pro- I think so. I th- I, yeah, I, I came across Mario, the like behind the curtains. Yeah, so I saw the creepy Mario behind the curtains, and then just really happy, uh, apparently British celebrity lady. Um, yeah. And I thought when I saw the GIF, I thought it was like spliced together. I thought it was two separate things. And I was like, oh, that's creepy. Then I come to watch this trailer for the N- Nintendo Girls Club, and. <clears throat> It's just one of those things that the the intent I get the intentions, but it's delivered in such a terrible way. I I just can't. I don't know why. This 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 just admits that gaming is more of a boys' club than I think it really is, and yeah. it's well, it just, makes you feel bad. Yeah, yeah. It's just like these do do young girls really not feel comfortable playing Mario because of. All of, because all yeah because I, I don't know I've had when I, when this came up a lot of the uh, conversations we had around it were kind of related to the you know the whole branding of Lego friends and how there are girl Legos and there are boy Legos and I think we all want to live in a world where you don't have to make that separation but I also I've seen the effectiveness of Lego friends on uh, my stepdaughter and and my nieces like they love yeah. their Lego friends and. Um, so it, it does work in some regard, but it's, it's, it's also just I, appealing at too, too l- low of a common denominator there that it just, it came across as Nintendo being out of touch is that's, that was what I was struck with, with the trailer. Yeah, a little bit. And and I, I must say, I mean, growing up, I had two older sisters and they were just as involved in just video games in general as I was mm-hmm. like, without a doubt, like my uh, the the younger of the two older sisters was very much a tomboy, but then of course my oldest sister is very much not. And guess what? They both played the exact same games for pretty much the exact same reasons that I was playing video games because they were fun, yeah. you know, and they were fun distractions. So I don't. I, it almost it almost makes me think that the the message itself is good, but the delivery yes. is n- yes. not so much. Yes, it just. I think it's doing more harm than help as far as just yeah. it's just calling out this dividing line that we're all trying to get away from and uh um and yeah it's just like i got like i was saying earlier i just see the the widespread appeal of minecraft uh like i said to uh, my nieces yeah, my exactly. nieces friends it's it's so gender neutral that it's it's pretty impressive it's pretty incredible and then it just seemed like this was a step backwards and nintendo just Going to, I don't know, just to an audience that doesn't really exist anymore. Like it's it's very old school. I'd expect this in the '90s, I guess. More yeah. so, it's I really mean, out of date, out of touch. And that's and that's kind of I just got to thinking the fact that you know the the fact that mobile platforming and stuff has really come into its fold. You know, more in the last five years, pretty much any game is accessible anytime, anywhere. Mm-hmm. 
so yeah, why would we why would we need to really I don't know. Like I feel like there there could be opportunities for games to be developed in that, you know, that realm. But the fact that everybody has the same almost the same ability to access these games. Oh, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. Yeah, there's got to be a better way. Yeah, exactly. Um which we we you know, I I actually might bring this up more with uh um trying to get our friends at Pure Geekery to come podcast with us and I know this would be something she would Yeah. Um, have much more, more, much more of a valid opinion on than two random dudes, but right. but still, it just that I was unsettled by that trailer, and 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 on the other side, just another misstep by Nintendo was uh, it's kind of frustrating to see. Yeah, um, they 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 try to be they try to be forward forward thinking and make it seem like they have the inside you know job on the the future of video games, but at the same time, they're relying on all this old stuff. Yeah, yeah, that they just can't give up. Um, last story here, since you a trailer for a new, uh, science fiction horror game called Caffeine, uh, which... No, 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 it's a sci-fi horror adventure! <laughs> so you're a... Which, which is a weird word to tack on the end of this trailer. You are apparently a young boy, but you're, you're someone trapped alone on a random, sp- uh, like, far away space station. And just yeah. exploring this thing, and it's creepy, and it is just another fantastic setting for for a horror game, and I can't wait to see what actually comes from it. But the the trailer was just it was unsettling in the, the best the way trailer, possible. The trailer is really good. It's it. I couldn't help though to immediately think of Alien yeah. Isolation. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I, I was like, is this pretty much the same? kind of thing yeah i don't you know it's but it's what if very it's, atmospheric but what i if, hope it's i hope it's nothing like what we think it is i i i really hope it is um gone home in space yeah that's what i'm hoping that would that would be crazy but, in, in a really good way and then they're gonna have to explain the title to me because nothing about that Makes sense to me. Well, the they, show, so. they, they show sort of the the coffee cups on in the kitchen, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, with you know, but with it being a kid, maybe they think it's caffeine, but it's not. That makes <laughs> these Drugs. evil things happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a dare game. <laughs> <laughs> in space, do drugs. You're but gonna end up know, in the space like, station alone. I I I liked what I saw, but I. Th- felt so manipulated I, I, <laughs> I was like okay so you know i'm like reading the text and i'm like staring at this one very specific part of the screen and then i whole time i'm thinking like oh, something's gonna jump out something's gonna jump out at me there's no way that this is just a legit like everything's fine and calm and yeah. then it because it's playing this like totally like futuristic lounge music <laughs> that sucks you in it's like futuristic muzak but it's kind of funny being in the post post gone home world now. Like you don't, I don't, you don't really know what what's what's going to be your angle on this horror game. What are you gonna What are you gonna do with yeah. this atmosphere? So I don't know. It's got my attention though. So that's really all those trailers need to do. And happy to pass that on. So uh, we'll get out of here with uh, game industry shout outs or call outs. Do you have something? I kind of filled this in for you. You did, and it, if you have something else. Hilarious. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good. It's it's pretty amazing. The the animation glitch in the Telltale games, where essentially it looks like it just looks like what air air humping. Yep. Like the most sensual air. I would perform it, but I I'm I'm I would be surprised if they didn't cut my camera off again. But <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just. So what is it? The first the the first clip was from. Uh, Wolf Amongst Us, mm-hmm. and then they had one from the like l- most recent Walking Dead uh, episode, mm-hmm. where everyone they're just like it looks like they're holding like a pole. Yep, and then they're just like thrusting. So <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it in like <laughs> the constraints of of my webcam. But I it's believe just... I believe Telltale like they actually retweeted it and said, "Oh, looks like somebody found a way to." You know, strip out our animation routines and apply them to other characters in hilarious situations. So essentially, yeah, they found the stripper animations, which are in The Wolf Among Us when you go to the nightclub, 
and just they're up, not in the walking dead i can tell you that yeah applying not- applying them to <laughs> the walking dead in the most serious of situations but also just there's a scene in episode three where big b is just they're in their they're in their office trying to figure out their next moves and he's recovering and he's like you know patching himself up and he's shirtless but he's just having this serious conversation and they have so they have shirtless big b just grinding on this non-existing stripper pole while everybody's having the conversation around him and uh that kind of made my week that was uh especially like having just come out of it, the finishing that game and or finishing that episode and yeah um and also just seeing telltale kind of laughing at it it was uh that was making the rounds it was pretty damn funny yeah, I've yet to start the game. Period. I have it. I, I know. are you are you I waiting? Know. Are you waiting for all the episodes at this point? You know, I I, I should because you're the opposite I, of me. Because you're going you're going through the Walking Dead season two as it's coming out, and yeah. I'm I'm waiting on that. And you're so yeah. yeah. You'll get your. I, I I think the problem is is that I'll be like I'm just gonna play episode one and see how it is. Then then look and be like I have two more episodes here that I could be playing right now. I think so I don't know. I th- I would recommend at this point wait for episode four to come out. I think okay. playing through all four and then having the wait for five would be the way to go. I think you should gotcha. still do some of that tension between episodes, but. Who knows when this series will actually be done? Hopefully this year. <laughs> They've only got two left, yeah. right? They're gonna do it. It's April though. It, uh, yeah. Anyway, that that series is great. And those animate. I, I I need to see more Telltale animation glitches because their content's gotten so serious. It's good to see see it have fun a little bit. If if it happened to me while I was playing the game, I would be very upset. Yeah. But if there were ways. Oh of no! I mean, this was they hacked it. it together. They purposely made yeah. it happen. This isn't just something that popped up. So sure. Uh, you know, as as glitchy as those games sometimes can be, that don't worry that this this won't break your experience. Because sure, yeah, that would be weird. Uh, I don't know how I'd react if I was live streaming that. Honestly, that'd be be pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to give a shout out to I don't re- normally give a short shout out to 4chan, but um, apparently a group of group of gamers on 4chan has uh, taken on the task of making a list of every video game ever. Wow! So Godspeed in that in that endeavor. Um, I'll keep checking on the progress. I wouldn't even know where to start. Like, you gotta start chronolo- cr- chronologically, right? Or do you start that backwards? Just, uh, that or you just literally st- just start naming every game you've ever seen or played, and then <laughs> go from there. I don't know. I really don't know. It makes me want to try it myself. Like, how many I, video games do I have have knowledge of? I'd really be and interested. What can I be using that knowledge for? Like other than video games, I could, you know, probably cure cancer or something. Like I'd like to see the whole like the I'm a I'm a data guy. I'd like to see the chart of like where they start. Like what was their initial rush? Like sure. where did where did they focus heavily on? And what did they miss? And yeah, um, yeah, that'd be infuriate infuriating. Like I could never do that publicly because it'd just be I would just like release it at the end versus but. It'd be kind of fun to see their progress. So, uh, anyway, good good you know, luck with that. There would be that one game you missed that that only like ten people ever played. But you really pissed those ten people off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, that's gonna do it for tonight's show. Jason, thanks for jumping on here. Um, the top video game podcast will be back again next Tuesday. Uh, we come at you live every Tuesday at eight p.m. on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. Thanks everybody for hanging out. We will catch you next time. Bye-bye.